So we got a new poll in the Democratic primary. Always interesting when media outlets actually decide to poll the contenders who are in the race versus all the like fantasy. They still will do these polls that are like, what about Kamala Harris? What about Michelle Obama? It's like, <laughs> those people are not running. You have people who are actually running, so how are they doing in the race? Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen. This is from Change Polls. They find Joe Biden still with a commanding lead at 65%. However, both his, of his challengers um, in this particular poll are in double digits. You've got Marion Williamson and RFK Jr. tied at 11%. Um, this was taken uh, from 428 to 5-2. Um, so, you know, Whatever you think of those two candidates, you'll have the media like frantically declaring they're not serious, they're not serious, they're not serious. Meanwhile, they're doing better against Biden than every candidate in the Republican side against Trump, save for DeSantis. Mm -hmm. You don't have all the same like, oh, Tim Scott's not serious. Oh, Nikki Haley's not serious. Oh, Mike Pence's not serious. Um, it's not up to you guys to determine who's serious or not. It's up to the voters. And also, judging by previous standards of who would qualify for the debate stage, candidates in double digits would overwhelmingly qualify. It's not even close call um, for a debate stage. But, you know, there was another poll, Emily, that was even perhaps more interesting to me, which is um, this Harvard-Harris poll, which we talked about a couple times in the show, which had a lot of really interesting data. They asked the question of voters, do you think Joe Biden is going to win the Democratic primary? Only 50% said yes. It was 50-50. Democratic voters. This, I think this was all voters. Oh, of all voters, okay. And I That's found brutal. that kind of astonishing because, you know, again, you have this overwhelming narrative that he doesn't even have a challenger. Like, they barely even acknowledge um, Bobby or Marianne. Mm -hmm. And yet voters are saying, like, eh, I'm looking at this guy, and I, let alone the general election, I don't even know he's going to make it through the Democratic primary. So I thought that was kind of stunning. Yeah, there's another uh, finding from the poll that said, they asked, is Joe Biden mentally fit to serve as president of the United States, or do you have doubts about his fitness for office? Which is an interesting question, because technically both of those things could be true at the same time. You think, he's probably fit, but I have doubts about it. Well, the results are 57% of people have doubts about his fitness for office. Um, that includes a quarter of Democrats in the poll. 24% of Democrats said that. 83% um, of Republicans said that they have doubts about his fitness. And now get this, here is the real problem for Joe Biden. 65% of independents answered that I have doubts about his fitness. 35% said he is mentally fit. And I think that question actually goes hand in hand with the one that you were talking about they asked in terms of uh, whether he's going to be the, yeah. the nominee, people just see that he's frail. And he is obviously frail. And I think people wonder, um, you know, potentially what could happen. Donald Trump, by the way, no spring chicken, also fairly old. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think these, these questions are front and center of everyone's mind. Like when I think about Tim Scott's campaign, um, they're saying like, literally, we have no idea what's going to happen a year from now. We have no idea what's going to transpire. So we're just going to kind of wait in the wings, see what happens, and we'll Hope be there. The best. Be in position if, if something changes. Yeah. I mean, what's interesting to me is they asked the same question on the Republican side. Do you think Donald Trump is going to win or lose the Republican nomination? Right. They actually had, he had a little bit more confidence that he was going to win the Republican nomination than Biden had that he was going to win the Democratic nomination. It's pretty close. So 52% of voters thought that Trump would win the nomination versus 48%. But compare that to the media coverage. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were listening to the media, there isn't even a Democratic primary going on. Like Joe Biden is being anointed. It's happening, period, end of story. Voters clearly not so sure. On the other side, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about Trump's weakness and, you know, how he's really vulnerable and how DeSantis has a real shot. Now, I think the media has sort of turned on that mm -hmm. recently just over some stumbles and over some weakness in the poll. But you definitely think there's more of a race going on on the Republican side. And that's actually not how voters are seeing things. I think you're 100% correct that it does come down to voters just looking at Biden and on a basic human level being like, I don't know if this guy can like go through another four years. Surely they're going to come up with some kind of alternative. Let alone another campaign cycle. Right. But it also really demonstrates why Democrats are so desperate. DNC Democrats, elected Democratic elites, are so desperate mm -hmm to keep the public from even knowing that they have choices, to keep Biden off of a campaign stage or a debate stage with those choices, 
because they know that people really are looking for alternatives and open to alternatives. And they just their best bet is just to pretend like those alternatives don't actually exist. They are not confident in Joe Biden, I think, for good reasons. When you look at 65 percent of independents saying that they're not sure about his fitness for office, that's why they don't want Joe Biden on the debate stage. But honestly, it could backfire on them and be totally counterproductive in the same way that it backfired on them in 2016, because it gives uh, RFK Jr., it gives Marianne more ammunition to say, this is a, an actual conspiracy and the part of the DNC to keep voters from having options. And that's it. We, we saw all of the leaks come out. We know that's exactly what happened. And that pisses voters off. It yeah. will Bernie laid the groundwork for people to understand that this is a real narrative, that this is rooted in truth. Um, and that is powerful when you see it happening again and again and again. And your alternative is not, uh, you know, if Hillary Clinton, all the flaws that Hillary Clinton has, she's not senile in the same way that Joe Biden is. And that's going to be a huge problem for the DNC because when people are, you know, you already have double digits for Marianne and RFK Jr., that's crazy. Yeah. That's bad for the DNC's ability to actually control the narrative. When every article is like, they're not serious, they're not serious, to the extent they mention them at all. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty interesting. I think it's pretty wild. And it's also why... Even though, do I have any confidence the DNC is going to actually bend and schedule debates or that Biden would subject himself to? No, because they are so fearful of any sort of exchange, any sort of acknowledgement that there is real competition there. But I still think it's really important to press the case to uh, educate the, the public and the Democratic primary base that, number one, this party that claims to be all, oh, democracy is so sacred, et cetera, mm -hmm. you know, not living up to their word, number one. And number two, to just, you know, uh, illustrate for them that there are alternatives, that they're being shut out and that you don't have to go in the direction of another four years of hoping that the actuarial tables are wrong. So I just pulled up a, 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 a NBC article from June 23rd of 2015 that says it's the headline, Bernie's long odds versus Hillary, NBC, WSJ, Wall Street Journal poll. Bernie was pulling at 15 percent. Um, Hillary Clinton was at 75%. Wow. And so, again, that was more of a binary choice because now you have probably RFK Jr. and Marianne Williamson splitting votes, but holy smokes, like, that's 15% for Bernie Sanders. When you combine Marianne and RFK Jr., you're already way higher than that. Yeah. So this is bad news and for And there was the another, DC. I think, 11% that said, don't know. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.